Natalie Paul from Beatrick Bakes is here to make us the most epic banana cake you've ever had. <laughs> I don't um, say it lightly either because this is pretty cool. <laughs> well, my banana cake, I like it somewhere in between a fluffy banana cake and I don't really like banana bread. Okay, there I said it. Wow. <laughs> mm. So this is right in the middle. It's okay. a nice moist banana cake and it's got a beautiful cream cheese topping on it with a bit of tahini. Oh, that's what makes it really special, exactly. the tahini. Yep. So those slight little differences that yep. really make your cake shine. So what do we start with? If I could ask you to cream the butter and sugar. I can. It's not going to get super fluffy. It's just going to like mix and it'll get a bit fluffier when the eggs go in. Okay, so softened butter. S squidgy, I like mm -hmm. to call it. And sugar wise? It's raw caster sugar. Okay, why do you use raw caster sugar? Because it has a little bit more of a malty kind of flavour, mm. which is really lovely, and just like a little bit of difference. Love it. Beautiful. And once that's mixed, you can start adding the eggs okay. one after the other. Sounds good. I'm onto it. Beautiful. I'm going to start all the bananas. Okay. Now, I like to um, do banana weight because all bananas are different. Of course they yeah. are. Yep. That's what I love about your cookbooks. I've got your first one. It's incredible. If you can get it, get it. It's called Beatrix Bakes. Thank you. Yes, it is. And what I love about it, exactly like that, you say the weight. So there's no doubt whatsoever. You know every cake is going to work because exactly. it's accurate. Because what if you had a ladyfinger banana? Every exactly. time. <laughs> and you can still use the lady exactly. fingers. You just need the exact weight. Exactly. So I've got that in there. Yep. And I'm going to add my yoghurt okay. in there. Any type of yoghurt? I think full fat yoghurt. Yes. And I'm just going to mash that. Okay. So How's this is creamed quite nicely. Yes. Have a look at that. Tell me what you think. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, it's gorgeous and malty. <laughs> I love it. So I can start adding the eggs one at a time. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And room temperature eggs. Yeah, so some of the, the things when we bake that can go wrong. Yeah, so when you're adding eggs to creamed mixtures, you can have this thing happen where the butter and sugar will split or yes. look curdled. Yep. Um, the way to avoid that is using room temperature eggs or just bringing your eggs up a little bit by putting them under hot water for a minute. Oh, that's a great tip because yeah. sometimes you don't want to wait. You want to get started exactly. straight away. And yep. sometimes, you know, you want to keep your eggs in the fridge because it's safe. Yep. I've just mashed this up here and I've left a couple of, like, friendly chunks left mm, in there. And good. that's going to now just um, hang around until the creamed butter and sugar and egg mix is ready. Sounds good. I'll pop that over there. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to combine all my dry ingredients in this bowl. All right. So a little bit of plain flour. That's right. And I love this one because it's nice and soft for biscuit, pastry and cake. Yes. So it's a really, really great one. Not all flours are equal. They are not. <laughs> they are not. And I've got some baking powder. Okay. A little bit of rising agent there. And I've got some bicarb. Mm -hmm. So they're both raising agents, but what bicarb does is it will um, just give it a little extra lift at the start. But okay. if we used all bicarb, it would taste like really bitter. Yes. 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 Now, what are your special spices? <laughs> oh, my spices. spices. Okay. <laughs> they are ginger, yep. cinnamon and cardamom. And that's just going to sit there with a sieve ready to finish off the batter. All right. How's this that going? Is looking very good. <gasps> Ooh. It's perfect. It, it is. looks like buttery mousse. It's so floofy. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> so that can go in with the bananas and the yogurt. Right, I get onto that. You'll scrape that away. Um, I am going to chop these up. Beautiful. So this goes straight, goes straight into in. all the wet ingredients together. That's right. Quite a simple recipe to follow this one. So simple yeah. um, and it's even nice without the icing. So if you just have that craving for a banana cake and you've got those two yeah. black bananas sitting on the kitchen counter. That's the thing with bananas. They can ripen up so fast. So fast. And it's almost like a, it's a great thing when it happens. Like, ooh, yeah. well, I guess I better yeah. make a banana cake. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. You're just going to fold them together. Okay. Done. Great. Go. And just very simply sifting that over. So this is where we need to be careful with it to ensure that we get that perfect crumb. In That's right. Not yep. to overwork the flour. Not to overwork it, but also not to underwork it so that we've got little seams of flour exactly. in the batter. So just a gentle... Yeah, gentle stir, yeah. nice big movements. You can already smell it. it smells banana-y and spicy yeah. and it's good. 
It's all going to come together nicely. Absolutely. What type of tin do you use for this? 23 centimetres square. Okay. Or with a slightly rounded edge, but you can absolutely use a round tin, whatever you have. A spring form tin is perfect. And Nat, uh, what temperature are we cooking this cake and for how long? It might shock you, but it's going to be 140 degrees, oh, wow, which is low. quite low. Yep. So what that means is that the cake will rise nice and evenly mm. and it won't get a dome in the centre. Uh -huh, great trick. All right, Beautiful. we'll pop this into the oven after we've added the walnuts. That's right. Perfect cake. Perfect cake, nice and flat. So we're going to ice this now. OK. And we're going to put all of these ingredients together mm -hmm. into the um, mixer. OK. At once. And so everything same temperature again. Everything same temperature, especially that cream cheese, because that can be really hard when it's cold. Yeah. And it doesn't soften that well in the microwave. You can actually start cooking it. Ah, right. So it's always best to just be one step ahead of your cream cheese. Yep. Be prepared. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> now, the tahini is very interesting. Yeah, so these flavours in this cake, the walnuts and the cardamom uh, yoghurt are a little bit Middle Eastern. Yep. So it's actually just accentuating all those flavours as well. And tahini has this beautiful savoury property mm. against um, sweet things, yep. especially banana and white chocolate. And I'm using white chocolate instead of icing sugar for my sweetener because mm. I think it adds a richer kind of sweetener, not like a toothache kind of sweetening. Yeah. yeah. That's why I love your cakes because everything's perfectly balanced. It's not too sickeningly oh, sweet. I try Don't to like keep that, that balance. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, they can. It's easy to hide oh, behind sugar. So absolutely. if you can balance it out, yes. well, you can have more pieces of cake, really. <laughs> this is the genius. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All beautiful. Right. So just nice low speed and just let it all come together so it's a nice, beautiful, creamy taste. Great. Oh, <gasps> looking good. Yes. There we go. More fluffiness. Take that out. Beautiful. Um, you can just be really, yeah, that's gorgeous. Just get it on just there. Get it on there. <laughs> Big right. pile of deliciousness. Oh, look yes. at that. <laughs> and we're doing this straight in the tin. Straight in the tin. Okay. Um, keeping it in the tin keeps it a little bit fresher if yep. you're going to hang it. If it's going to hang around for a bit. Yeah, can we make but this in advance, this cake? Sure can. Yep. I think it gets better after a couple of days. Mm, okay. The flavours tend to merge and gets a little bit softer. And then now I'm just going to mm, push see. this out. You can smell that tahini. Yeah, yep. the tahini and those walnuts yep. and all the spices. All the spices. Mm, very yep. nice. And then if you want to be fancy, you can go across the top and make some, like, little strips and mm. just, like... Give it its little ridges. Love that. Beautiful. Done. Gorgeous. <gasps> taste? Yes, we should. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so you've got this little bit of hang on the side. Just going to lay that out. Beautiful. And again, mm. it doesn't have to be, it's not a super elegant cake. No. This is for afternoon teas. Oh, just have a look yep. at the centre of that. Big pieces. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh. And just look at its moistness. So moist. So beautiful, but still a little bit fluffy, not dry like banana bread. I'm sorry to hate <laughs> banana bread so much. <gasps> no banana bread here, only banana cake. <laughs> beautiful. Mm, yes. I think that's your piece. It's got my name all over it. <laughs> look at that delight. This is my piece. Now that. Is one hell of a banana cake. Not bread. <laughs> Not bread. Not bread. Banana cake. Mm -hmm. Do you know what makes it super special? It's that tahini, just the smallest amount of tahini with that white chocolate. Yep. That is just, just the best. Oh, amazing. Thank you, Nat. Let's go bananas. <laughs> ha! Love it.